Hello, it's Shoaib here from Media King again. And what we'll do this time is continue our microservices learning by extending our API and building new microservices. Just to recap, microservices are a powerful way of having your services independent from each other and in separate units or functions. They're hosted online in cloud hosting and you, you can use them from any web application. But the power of them and how it makes them different from other web services or traditional services is now you can create a microservice that could be consumed from any front end or back end for that matter. This can be a desktop application, a website, even a mobile app. All your team needs to do or yourself is be concerned with creating a robust microservices architecture and design. And then other teams can pick that up and consume it via various interfaces into their mobile app or website front end. So it shows you how powerful that is. And to do that, you can do it as easily as with um, traditional methods such as REST API. Um, and that's just right out of the box. So one thing I probably should have covered last time that I didn't is if you know JavaScript, any object oriented languages or any other programming languages, things like that will really help in what we're doing here. Um, however, if you don't and you've just got basic JavaScript or HTML, you can still begin um, and don't let that be a barrier for yourself. So what we'll look at this time um, specifically is creating a sign up method or a sign up microservice. What the caveats are with the sign in microservice uh, once you've signed up, as well as talk a bit about the on auth object from Firebase. We also have an authentication table in Firebase, which we'll cover. This is an API where you could register and sign in users with very little code. Um, and you don't need to build a whole API around authentication. We'll also introduce Express.js as a server. This is a, a common standard now or industry standard for creating X, uh, node ap applications or node web uh, based servers. Um, so yeah, uh, let's jump right into it. If we first look at our last microservice, it's still up and running in Firebase functions dashboard. You can see here, hello world. We could call the microservice again with that endpoint. In fact, we could just do it here if we refresh the page. There you go, there's the microservice came back. We could test it again. We could say hello from our first microservice tutorial number two. Hit save, go to your terminal and make this a little bit bigger. And the terminal them and let's redeploy that. The Firebase deploy. This should be quite quick as you saw last time. So let's give it a minute or so. What we expect to see is our new text here being returned as a response when we call the microservice called Hello World. Obviously with Firebase being a busy service used by potentially millions of people worldwide. Sometimes there are delays or slight failures, um, but yeah, we'll just wait for it. There we go. Took slightly longer than expected, but hey ho. Let's refresh the page. There we go. Hello from our first microservice. 
we're in tutorial number two. Same goes for in five in uh, Postman. If you recall, we tested it in Postman um, and we fetched our microservice this way. So click send, we should see the text down here change. And there you go, there's our new response. Cool. So let's add in our sign up method. And our sign up method, as I talked about there, is going to introduce us into a new service in Firebase called Authentication. And here's the authentication table. I think we enabled it last time. And instead of adding a user manually, we'll do it from a microservices uh, backend. So let's go and do that right now. So I've got some boilerplate um, code that we could use right here. In fact, let's go down here. So copy and paste that in there. Feel free to pause the video and get a copy of the code as well um, from the screen. I'll post this in a GitHub link in, a, in the next video as well. So let's change this up here a second. What I've done in this method is changed the request name and the response to request to REQ for short and response to RES for the response. So let me explain what the method does. I'm going to get rid of a few things here. before I explain it. So here you go, line one. There's nothing new here. We'll change this to sign up. This is the same type of definition as before. You've got the your export that exports this function or module as a um, as a function module that's available in Node.js and in the rest of your application in other components and parts functions we're utilizing the functions service from firebase or library https is a child of functions because we're using https methods to do requests and responses on request is what we're passing into our on request object and if you hover over it, it tells you our arguments that are needed which is a request object the response object um, your parameters inside we're setting a rule it's just a simple if statement that says if we're requesting with any other method other than post i.e if the requested method is not post then we are returning a not allowed message to the user and we're ending the function okay Apologies, actually the function there won't be ended because the function only ends on the response, which is down here, what you send in the response. However, we tell the user we we are cancelling the HTTP request. Okay, so we'll check if that really ends our function as well. I believe it should. Next step here is we're passing in our payload. Payload is a way to add data from an application or from Postman uh, in the body section here, which we haven't covered before. And so we'll do so in a second. So the payload goes something like this. You call this method or microservice or function because it is really the same thing. The request, you're doing your checks up here. As well, you can request the payload, which is the data you're passing in to the microservice or your function. In our case, we're saying request, then fetch from the body an object or variable called email and store it in a local variable called email. Same goes for password, fetch in the body as part of the request for variable called password. And then next, what we do is we're using the Firebase um, object 
or library to call its authentication library. And then from there on, there's a function called create user with email and password. And with that, we pass in our email, which is up here that we requested from the user. That normally comes from the application, obviously, and the password as well from, say, a registration form. We take those two and we just execute them. If there are any errors, handle them over here. Okay, and then upon completion of this microservice or function, we return to the user, it was successful. Okay, so let's give this a try. And in fact, before we do so, there's quite a few things we need to add to our server, which is this file here, to make all the Firebase communication work. So again, I've copied from my example code file here, and I'm just going to do that right now. So the bits of code that are copied are mainly new Node.js or NPM modules. These give us the functionality to speak, to express, and to other bits of Firebase. So let's copy a few things from here. Go to the top. It's this file here actually. And then I'm just going to replace that one there because I've already got it in my copy. Yeah. So I'm just going to uncomment everything there. So before I explain what everything is here, I'm going to get um, some connection parameters from Firebase uh, console. So go over here back to Firebase and click on this um, cog here, settings cog, and click on project settings. And then what you want to do is scroll down here and it says there's no apps in your project and just click on the web app there. Give it a nickname, MS Tutorials. Do that anyway for now, although we won't use it. And click register app, and it gives you an SDK to develop locally. Um, SDK just stands for Software Development Kit, which is a communication channel between a common library and your local de uh, development settings. So what you want to do down here is click next. We don't want that bit of code there. We want something else. Firebase Tools. I believe we already have Firebase Tools. Package.json. No, nope. so we're gonna need that as well. So copy that there. Okay. And you can see here we're in the microservices um, level. So this is where you install that. And it's not in the functions folder. You'll notice Firebase Tools was not installed, or you will not see it in your package.json file because we installed it globally. If you look here, it had the hyphen G flag. Okay, cool. So what we need to do next is carry all the instructions, click next here, and then we can log in, initialize, and deploy. We already know those things. So click go back to console and then go back here. Um, if you remember, was in the project settings. Go back to the bottom here and click on config. And here, copy all of the data in here. Go back to your application in the server file here and paste it in here in this curly braces. Just tidy it up. Okay, and we've got one curly brace there, just to make it look neater. So what we'll do now is try to save this. In fact, we'll need to install all the modules first that we imported up here, body parser, express, cores, um, and Firebase.